another episode of self development with tactics podcast today once again going through another book summary by nat eliason not eliason probably i would actually have to check that out or read it somewhere or maybe ask him whether this or that is the right pronunciation but i assume eliason makes a bit more sense since you do not really see what we're going through today we go through Seeking Wisdom by Peter Bevelin, or Bevelin, or Be, well, well, I don't know. It was rated 10 out of 10 for all the podcast listeners by Ned Eliasson, and the high-level thoughts are, simply the best book on improving your decision-making there is. It is dense and hard to get through if you're not truly interested, but it is well worth it. From Darwin to Manga. Darwin, you probably know who Darwin is, and Manga, um, probably meaning, I think he's called Charlie Munger, the business partner of Warren Buffett, as far as I do remember. Our basic nature is based on a hunter-gatherer style living. Biologically, we have spent 99% of our existence as a species in a hunter-gatherer state, and we have not evolved enough to adapt to not being in one yet. Many of our tendencies can be explained by this history. We are drawn to novelty because the unknown is potentially rewarding. We might gain some benefit from exploring it, so we are drawn to it. I do think, um, without actually <clears throat> reading further, I had that that one might actually be able to to be happier by thinking about those tendencies and by thinking about those ancient um, things, ancient, ancient, ancient notions, ancient um, feelings and, and thoughts and, um, well, tendencies to actually be happier and uh, more fulfilled and have a better life. I mean, if I know, okay, I am probably drawn towards finding new things, experiencing new things, um, new things in general, maybe um, having different ways of getting to the same place, um, choosing a different route, and so on and so forth. So there might be several different ways in which you could um, fulfill, quote unquote, this feeling, this tendency. But yeah, the pilot's checklist to avoid fooling ourselves. There are 28 things 28 points i'm gonna read all of them and i'm probably not gonna say anything to any one of those because afterwards the quote-unquote normal part of the summary itself starts well actually it started already but anyway the first one is bias from mere association underestimating the power of rewards and punishment underestimating bias from our own self-interest Self-serving bias over optimism, self-deception and denial, wishful thinking, bias from consistency tendency, Diaz from deprival, maybe it is, well, no, it's, it's, it's Diaz from deprival syndrome, endowment effect, E-N-D-O-W-M-E-N-T, status quo bias and do-nothing syndrome, impatience, bias from envy and jealousy, judging by comparison instead of absolute value, bias from anchoring and adjustment, recency slash availability bias, omission or abstract blindness, dogs that don't bark, bias from reciprocating tendency, bias from over-influence by liking tendency, bias from influence of social proof, bias from influence of authority, sense-making construction explanations that fit an outcome, reason respecting, complying because we have been given a reason, believing first and doubting later, memory limitations influenced by suggestion, bias to just do something, mental confusion from feeling a need to say something, mental confusion from emotional arousal, mental confusion from stress, mental confusion from physical or psychological pain, influence of state, and the last one which is the 28th bias from uh, Lollapalooza, many tendencies operating together. Upton Sinclair, quote, it is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. 
Buffett, never trust financial projections. Yeah, uh, because we don't really know. We don't really know what the stock market is going to be like tomorrow or the next day and, and whatnot. Um, of course, there are, you know, predictions. They may be wrong, they may be right. Nobody knows and nobody can predict the real thing. Um, but, you know, some things tend to be more accurate and some things tend to be the quote-unquote truth and some things just are not going to be there. Manga, recognize your limits, how much you don't know. Don't try to be the smartest, just the least dumb. Which may actually be a very great way to, to live by. Always trying to be the smartest, always trying to just, you know, be your best is good. And, um, well, I would certainly think that I try to do so. But what about being the least dumb? Don't want to be a dumb person. It kind of, for me, for whatever reason, it feels like less pressure on me to, okay, I want to be smart, oh, I want to be good, I want to be this, I want to be that, instead of just trying to be not dumb. Feynman from the book Hey Mr. Feynman, as far as I remember, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and... O, O, you are the easiest person to fool. I'm sorry, and you are the easiest person to fool. We tend to make fast judgments and then doubt ourselves when we start to think the answer might be different. We don't like being wrong. Seneca, there is nothing wrong with changing a plan when the situation has changed. Definitely, which is the same thing as before, um, or which ties into the thing before. When I think that I might be wrong, the situation is different. It's not the same as before, where I did not have any opinion, maybe, quite. And now it has changed, so maybe I'm going to change my opinion again. If you aren't sure if you want to do something in the future, ask yourself if you would want to do it tomorrow. And when it is a hard fucking no, then it is probably also going to be a hard fucking no in the future. But who knows? I can't predict the future, and you can't either. Nobody really can. Huxley, facts do not cease to exist because they are ignored. Buffett, you don't have to make it back the way you lost it. In fact, that is usually a mistake. Maybe there is another way. Maybe you can do something different. Maybe you also should be doing something different. Maybe doing things in a different way because you've seen it does not really work. Makes sense because apparently it does not work for you. For somebody else it might work, but just because it works for somebody else does not mean that it works for you. Know your goals and opinions. Do you want this for emotional or rational reasons? The Noah principle, predicting rain doesn't count, building arcs does. <laughs> People would rather be wrong in a group than be right themselves. Well, I doubt that, to be honest. I would like to be right, but I do hate being the only one, the, the, the only one, yeah, the only one that is wrong. If everyone is on agreement on the decision, it is better to postpone until someone can come up with a good argument against it. You're neither right nor wrong because the crowd disagrees you're right or wrong based on your data and reasoning. Yeah, the crowd might just be wrong. Alright, who knows. Experts can be more convincing when they don't understand them. I'm sorry, when we don't understand them, we assume that means that they're smart. Yeah. Probably also one of the reasons why experts, quote-unquote, then tend to use language that is very complicated. And I think this is seen in quite some people. Um, they're trying to, to maybe cover them not knowing anything by using very big words. Even though I think it's one of the... Well, most well, maybe not most difficult things, but a very difficult thing to to have a difficult concept and put them into very simple words so that everyone can understand this. And I think most often, real experts can quite do so. Maybe it is also an ego thing because they know they are experts and don't really have to, um, you know, make other people believe in their 
or, or let other people think they are smart and or experts and or good or whatever. The seven sins of memory. Our memory weakens and det deteriorates over time. Deteriorates over time. We are preoccupied with distracting issues and don't focus on what needs remembering. We desperately, desperately, yeah, <laughs> desperately search for information that we know we know. This is a very big one for me. I always tend to search for information that I already know, and I don't, and I also like doing so. Maybe it's just because of approval or some shit, but um, in the past few weeks, I have really noticed this, and I've been going against it, going against this flow. We assign memory to the wrong sources. Memories are implanted from leading questions, comments, or suggestions when retrieving. Our present knowledge influences how we remember our past. We recall disturbing events that we would prefer to eliminate from our minds altogether. Man finds nothing so painful as being in complete rest without work, diversion or effort. Pascal, apparently. What do you want to accomplish? Buffett, there is no use running if you're on the wrong road. Socrates, awareness of ignorance is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> When we feel sad, we may want to change our circumstances so that we feel better. Our cortisol level rise the more, the more the other people order us about the other people. Well, the less we know about an issue, the more we'll be influenced by how it is framed. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, with us being sad, I'm going to see you the next time. So, bye-bye.